Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the pie guy. All right, this is second grade, module eight, lesson 14. And in this lesson, students are gonna be telling time to the nearest five minutes. We're just gonna continue kind of connecting the fractions that we were learning with telling time. And now we're gonna be a little bit more specific rather than to the quarter or the half hour. Now we're gonna to be to the five minutes. So let's get started. So we're gonna do a little bit of practice since the students, we want them to be learning to the nearest five minutes. Here is a, a bit.ly uh, of a GeoGebra applet that I created for telling time. And so let's zoom in. Oh, so by the way, it's case sensitive. So you do need a capital D, capital C, but it's bit.ly slash Dwayne Clock. And if we zoom in a little bit, so now here you've got this timer and you've got this slider and this slider will move both the analog and the digital clock. And if at any time you want to hide the digital clock, you just click on that little box and that will get rid of it. Now we can start here at the eight o'clock hour and then uh, we can hide that digital clock and we can show that one, two, three, four, five, and then show that, oh, it's 8.05 and then now it's 8.10, and now it's 8.15, etc. And the idea would be for the students to recognize that each number represents five more minutes. So you've got 8.20, 8.25, 8.30, then 35, then 40, then 45, 50, 55. And of course, you wrap around to 60, which is a new hour. Now you're, you're at 9 o'clock. And the idea, parents and teachers, is you can play with this. You can hide the hand and the analog hands. You can set the time. Okay, 455. Perfect. And then you can move these manual hands that I'm doing with, with my hand here. And we could say, well, what would 455 look like? Well, let's start with our hand our minute hand, and we say that, okay, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So there's our minute hand is at 55. And where would this hour hand be? Well, we know it started at 4, and it's almost 5. So I'm going to move my hour hand almost to 5, but not quite. And that's a little bit of a guessing game. And then we can click the box to show the actual clock hands. And oh, look at that. I was, I was, my hour hand was off by just a little bit. And that's the idea. So parents and teachers, let your students play. Um, you can, uh, there's a bazillion different varieties of what you can do. You can hide the digital clock, hide the prediction hands, and you can set the time for something. And then let your students uh, say, well, what time is that? Well, we know that it's a little bit after 5 o'clock because it's right here. It's a little bit after 5, but exactly how many minutes after 5? What is this minute hand? Well, we're going to start up here, and we're going to count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, it is 520. And if we want to see if we're right, you just click on the show digital clock, and sure enough, look at that. It says 520. So that's the idea for how to play with this applet and, and participate in a nice conversation about how to tell time. The big thing is helping our students count by fives. That's key to telling time, is we want our students to be able to do that sing-song 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's the whole idea. So they've had plenty of opportunities to be playing with that clock, and so now we're going to be doing some skill building towards reading that clock. So first we're going to fill in the missing numbers. So the idea would be to grab your pen and do your skip counting by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. And the key for that, the reason we care, is because then suddenly we're going to do the exact same thing only now we're doing it on the face of a clock. So you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, etc. 45, 50, 
55, and then this is 60, but really 60 wraps around to a brand new hour. And so that's why we have, this is skip counting, but then we've placed it in the context of a clock. So now we've removed a little bit of the scaffolding. They want us to draw the minute hands on the clock. So if this says 325, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, if it says 325, I know I'm going to start at 12, and I'm going to scooch over, and I know I'm going to do starting at 12. That's where the zero is, and we're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we know that the minute hand has to be going straight to that 5. And that's where that minute hand is going to go. Now, if we want to do 715, it's the same concept. We're going to start at that 12, and we're going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15. And so there's our 15, so we know our minute hand is going to go straight to the 3. And then the last one, 955. Now, parents and teachers, if you have students who can kind of work this backwards, by all means, let them work backwards. Uh, in fact, you might ask them, predict in your mind, where would the minute hand go? Uh, but if we, we're going to do it the slow way, so to speak, we could start at that 12 and we can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So we know that the minute hand is supposed to go towards the 11. Now, there's some things that they can do. They can stay, well, we know that 6 is 30, and then we can continue counting on 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Other students might recognize, wait a second, I know that 45 is right here. So you, the students might learn how to start at a certain benchmark. And that's that section. Moving down, we're going to basically more of the same. So we're just, oh, no, this one is now saying, oops, a little bit of higher level. This is saying now draw the hour hands. So the hour hands, well, if the minute hand is at the 30 and it's supposed to be 1230, well, we know that the minute hand ordinarily would be going to, I mean, the hour hand would ordinarily be going to the 12, but we're halfway through the hour. So our, um, our, our, <laughs> our, our hand, oh, that's hard to say, uh, is not really going to be facing the 12. Our, our hand is really going to be facing somewhere in the middle between the 12 and the 1. And so our hour hand is going to go something like that. And again, here's our 1010. So we know it's got to be the hour hand is going to be at the 10, straight pointing towards the 10. But we're a little bit past 10 o'clock. We're 10 minutes past 10 o'clock. So I'm going to move that Oops, I'm going to move that hour hand just a little bit and rotate it just a little bit. So it's not exactly at the 10. It's a little bit past the 10. You see how it kind of shoots a little bit past the 10? Totally estimating here, parents and teachers. And finally, 345. Well, we know if it was 345 that the hour hand would not be directly at the 3 the hour hand would have to be rotated some, somewhat to, oh, I don't know, right around there, maybe. So remember, this is a great example of how my uh, GeoGebra applet might be a great way for students to predict where the minute and hour hands are when given the digital time. So I'm going to say it again, kind of a shameless plug, but bit.ly slash... Dwayne Clock, all right? And that's going to allow you to practice with your kiddos um, placing the hour and the minute hand on the clock. And the last one, so let's, uh, last slide. Uh, let's take a look at 
draw the hour and minute hand. So now more of that same thing where the applet would be a great way to help our students. But let's say we're gonna zoom in on that 655 and 655 roughly. Well, we know the minute hand, the minute hand's easy. We know that's gonna to go to the 11. What about the hour hand? Well, it's not gonna go directly to the six. It needs to go beyond the six because we are almost to seven o'clock. So I'm gonna draw my hour hand almost to seven. How about 150? Well, the 50, let's take care of the 50. The minutes seems to be the easier part. The minutes goes to 10 right there. There's our 50. Now, where is that hour hand? Well. It's not going to go to the 1. It's going to go beyond the 1, almost to the 2, because we're almost at 2 o'clock. So our hour hand is going to go almost to the 2, but not quite. And that's the idea here, parents and teachers. And really, just let your students go to that GeoGebra applet that I created and let them play and have them predict on their own, because then what's really cool is you get instant feedback. You get to see the hands, and students can see if they're right or not, right away, immediately, rather than doing their homework and having to wait until the teacher the next day tells them if they did it correctly or not. Something that makes more sense is this: these two questions where, hey, students are supposed to say, what time is it? So we're going to look at the minute hand, and we see that it's at 35. So we definitely know the minute hand is at 35. What's the hour? Well, it's a little bit past the 1. It's not quite 2. So we know it's a little past the 1, not quite 2. So we know that the time is 1.35. And last one. Well, we know that the minute hand is 05, because it's five minutes, it's at the one. And then we can see that the hour hand is a little bit past the 10, so the time is 10.05. And that wraps up second grade module eight, lesson 14, students are telling time to the nearest five minutes.